Now that we've set up our initial API, let's go ahead and set up the client side. Inside of our client side, let's create a file called application.tsx. At the top, we're going to import React from React. We're going to export an interface called iApplicationProps and leave it empty for now. Next, we're going to create a const application, and this is going to be a React function component, which is going to pass in the iApplicationProps. For now, you could just return a div and then export the default application. We're eventually going to add some routing in here, so don't really worry about what you put in the return statement for now. Next, we're going to create a new folder called Components. We're going to create a new folder called Interfaces. We're going to create a new folder called Modules. And we're going to create a new folder called Pages. Also, for state handling, we're going to create an additional folder called Contexts. Let's go to our interfaces and define our route interface. We're going to export default interface iRoute in this file. And what this is going to define is everything we need to define the routes for each page. This interface is going to have six variables. We're going to have the variables called path, name, exact, auth, component, and props with a question mark. And the types are going to be string, string, bool, bool, and any, any accordingly. The question mark for the props means that this is optional and we don't actually have to add this when we're defining our routes. Next, inside of our config, we're going to create a routes.ts file. Inside of this, I'm going to create three objects that are of type iRouteArray and I'm going to initialize them all as empty arrays first. The three variables are going to be called authRoutes, blogRoutes, mainRoutes, and then I'm going to have a fourth additional array just simply name routes, which is going to be made up of the three previous variables I defined. How we're going to import those into the routes object is using three periods, which is also known as a spread operator, basically saying that we want to copy all the values of this array into the one we're defining. And then finally, at the end of the file, you're going to export default routes. That way, all of the routes we define in each separate variable is exported for us. Next, I'm going to go back to my index.tsx file. I'm going to include a browser router object from React Router DOM. And then inside of that, I'm going to pass in my application with no props. Next, inside the return function of my application, I'm going to define first a switch, also from React Router DOM. Sometimes you might get an import like it did at the top with React Router that automatically imports with VS Code, just go ahead and change that to React Router DOM. I'm going to define a routes map, and inside of it, a callback function with a route and an index is props. And so what I'm going to do here is basically I'm just going to return, and then I'm going to define my routes dynamically. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to call a route, also from React Router or React Router DOM. I'm going to pass in a key index, exact as a route.exact, the path as a route.path, inside the render function is going to be a callback with route props and this is going to be root component props and just pass in the any inside of the chevrons for now and this is going to point to a return and inside of that return you can just return a route.component you can pass in the route props. And if you wanted, you could also pass in the route.props. Next, let's define a couple pages. I'm going to define a home page. I'm going to import React from React at the top, just like I did for the application file. And then I'm going to create a function component. And what I can do is I can define props for each page separately, but instead I'm going to define page.ts file in my interfaces. And what this is going to do is just define a default prop for all my pages. I'm probably not going to pass anything into them in this project, but it's good practice to keep this separate and not just pass it an empty object into the props of a React function component. I'm going to go back to my home page and import the props I just created. Inside of the home page, I'm just going to return 
maybe a little paragraph that just says what page I'm on for now. And then I'm going to export the default home page at the bottom. This project is going to have a total of four pages. So I'm going to make three copies of it. And the other pages that I need are a login page, a blog page, and an edit page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each page and rename the components accordingly and leave them all the same looking for now. Now, once I'm done that, I'm going to go back to my routes.ts file that I defined in my config folder, and I'm going to start adding definitions for these routes. First, I'm going to add the login page to the auth routes. I'm going to define a path. I want the route to be exactly matching the path. I don't want this page to be protected for auth, so somebody who's not logged in can go to this page. I'm going to use my component login page. It should import automatically. And then I'm just going to give it a name that I might use in a future video. I'm going to copy and paste this for the other routes and define them accordingly. What I'm also going to do is actually create a register route inside of my auth routes. That's basically the exact same thing as my login. And that's because I want the user to think that there's a difference between the login and the sign up page, even though we're only using Google authentication. So when they click this button, the exact same thing is going to happen. I'm just going to have two different paths pointing to the same page. And when I actually create that page, I'll show you how to make it look like the pages are a little bit different just by using some conditional JSX. Inside of my blog routes, I'm going to create the edit route first. And the auth on this is going to be true. This won't have any effect for now, but this page can only be accessed by someone who's logged in. I'm going to have an edit slash and then a blog ID variable for my next route. And this one's also going to be auth set to true and also point to the edit page. And then lastly, blogs with the blog ID, this will go to the blog page. And the auth on this should be set to false because anybody who's not logged in should still be able to read a blog. And then I'm going to copy in to my main route, a home route which is just the path of forward slash. Now that I have all my routes defined, I'm going to run an npm start in my client folder, and I'm going to test just to make sure all the routes are working. So if I go to localhost 3000, what should pop up is the home page first. So great, that looks like it's working. Now if I type in a forward slash edit, it should take me to the edit page. You'll notice that the blog doesn't take me anywhere, and that's because I have to have a blog ID afterwards. But when I enter an ID, the blog page works, and the login page, as I mentioned before. So all of my routes are working properly. Now that we've defined some basic routing, let's go ahead and create a component. One of the first components I like to create when I'm doing a project is the nav bar, because the nav bar is going to be the base of your page. It's always going to be at the top, and it's always going to help you with some routing. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to my components folder and I'm going to create a new folder called navigation. Inside of it, a file called index.tsx. And at the top, I'm going to import React as I do and create an interface with some props. The interface is going to be empty for now. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a React function component and I'm going to pass in the props as we always do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a very simple React strap navbar. Again, I am using Bootstrap through React Strap React's library. So I'm going to go ahead and put my return statement and inside of it, first we're going to import a navbar from React Strap. The color is going to be equal to light. The light prop will be true. The sticky prop will be equal to top and the expand will be equal to MD. We don't really need the expand because I'm not going to be making this collapsible, but it's just good practice. Inside of it, I'm going to put a container so that everything is going to push into the middle. Next, I'm going to put a navbar brand. Now, this is where you would put your logo, logo for your page. I'm going to go ahead and tag this as a link from React Router DOM. 
which means that it's actually going to turn into a, a routing link into one of our pages, mainly the home page. So when they click this brand, it'll take them to the home page. Instead of putting a name, I'm actually going to put like a notepad emoji. So it kind of gives the blog like a cool little look. So I'm just going to paste that in there and Visual Studio Code, React, JavaScript, all recognize emojis. So they're pretty fun to work with. Next, I'm going to add a nav with a class name of mr-auto, and it's going to have a navbar prop equal to true. Then I'm going to export default the navigation component. The navbar will get more complex once we add authentication, but for now, this is all we need for a placeholder. So we're actually going to create another component now called the header component. That blog theme that we looked at in the first video has a nice splash image for each blog and the main menu. So we're going to create something similar. Let's go ahead and create a new folder inside of components called header. And then we're going to create an index.tsx file as well. I'm going to copy and paste my navigation in here to make everything quick and replace the word navigation with header. I'm going to get rid of all the navbar stuff because we don't really want that. And I'll just get rid of the imports because we're going to re-import everything we need anyways. Inside of the header props, I'm going to have an optional height prop that's a string. An optional image prop that's also a string. I'm going to have a title that's mandatory as a string. And a headline that's mandatory also as a string. Inside of the header function, create a const object that's empty. And then pass in children height, image, headline, and title. And we're going to be accessing these directly from the props. Next, I'm going to copy and paste in this header style that I used in another project, and I'll briefly explain what it does. So you'll notice here this linear gra gradient going on with this RGBA and the background image in it. Basically what this is doing is telling it to give it a little bit of shading. And I just using these default RGBA uh, values that I saw on another website, I thought was really nice. And then everything else you see, the cover, the no repeat in the center, just make sure that the image is stretched across so that it fits the background nicely, even if the image isn't the proper size. Also, I make sure that the width is 100% and the height is equal to the height variable. Inside of the return, we're going to add a header component. This is just an HTML component, not a React Strap component. It's going to have the header style as, as its style. We're going to import a React Strap container inside of it. We're going to add a row with a class name, align items center, and text center. Inside that row, we're going to have a column. Inside that column, we're going to have an H1 with a class name, display dash four, text dash white, margin top and margin bottom. I set the values to five and two, but you can use whatever you want. And then I'll pass in the title as an object. Next, we're going to have an H3 class name and we're going to do a margin bottom of five and a text white here as well. And this is going to be where our headline goes. Then. We can just put the children underneath just in case they pass anything else in to the header. Lastly, we're going to create some default props for this component. So we're going to type in header and then dot default props. And then inside of it, we're going to have the height being 100%. And then I'm going to copy and paste this link in here. And this is the stock photo of the same image that the start bootstrap uh, blog was using. Or you can do something like this. You can just view the background image and copy and paste the link. But this link that I'm using right here is actually from the Unsplash website where they got the photo. And just like that, you've completed the header component with some default props. So even though those are optional, it will always have a default height and image variable assigned to it. So let's go into our home page and let's play around with it a little bit. Let's get rid of this paragraph and we're going to throw in a container. We're going to make it fluid and have a class name of P-0, which means I don't want any padding. Inside of it, we're going to throw the navigation at the top with no props. And then we're going to throw in the header and we're going to have to assign the title 
and the headline to this. So for the title, we can just go ahead and put, you know, a blog website or a nerdy blog website, whatever you want. And for the headline, you can just put in a cool headline. Underneath that header, let's also add one more container. And this one will have a class name of a margin top with five. And then I'm just going to write some blog stuff here, just so you can see the separation on the page. So let's type an npm start and see what this looks like. It should route us directly to the home page when we go to localhost 3000. As you can see, we have the memo icon in the navbar where our slogan goes. We have a nice header with the same background as the blog template that we're using as a reference. It's not the same height, but that's okay because we want to be a little bit different. That being said, this is just about everything we need to start off the client side. Now that the basics of the client and server are set up, the next couple of videos are going to tackle authentication. Authentication is usually going to be one of the longer things you have to program because you want to make sure everything works perfectly. But once we're finished with the authentication, creating the blog isn't really the hard part. So we'll see you in the next video.